Martin, you said at the end of the game last Saturday that you were relieved that it was a big game, that it was a big three points. Do you feel slightly safer now when you look at the table? I feel relieved after any win, you know, because we had a, a few vital games. Uh, Newcastle was one of them. Then Swansea, and we played well, we couldn't get the win on the board. Then we, uh, West Ham, of course, must win game. And the same applied to them. And then we had this game against Stoke, not an easy team for us to play against and we had the three points but we're still not there. But of course you need your points, you need, I feel you need at least between 38 and 40 points to be safe and uh, 10 or 11 clubs will tell you the same, managers, staffs will tell you the same, they need these points to, uh, to get a cushion to go into the last five or six weeks of the season. The Chelsea game obviously will now move because of them progressing in the FA Cup and how important therefore is getting something at Sunderland with a two week break in between the next game? I don't want to, to put pressure on them, you know, so I won't talk about it uh, too much but of course it's important to get away wins because that is always helping you to get higher up in the league and I can tell you that we would like to stay in this league, that is important but of course we would like to go to 50 points and more like last season and, uh, but the first priority is, of course, to uh, be safe. But to have a result at Sunderland would be great. You know, we had a few, quite a few good results away from home, but we couldn't manage to have wins. Uh, we did well from the 1st of January or the New Year's Eve when we beat, uh, for example, West Bromwich Albion. Uh, Norwich was OK, because Norwich is not easy to go to. You saw that in their last game, you know, they managed uh, to have a win and I think we control them but we couldn't we play with a real purpose and that is what I hate you know because we have to play with a purpose and score goals if you're better and we were better so hopefully uh, if you look at Sunderland they've got a few good players up front Fletcher is a, is a terrific player scores half of their goals Graham of course uh, was a player at uh, Swansea who scored goals McLean is a big talent Johnson, I think it was 10 or 11 million. So they got, uh, if you look at the, the back four, you know, they got good players. If you look at Sessegnon, one of the better players in the whole, uh, in the English Premier League. So it's not a, an easy stadium to go to, but we've got a, a good squad together and we've got good players and we, uh, I think we are prepared uh, well to go there and have a result. You have a lot of options now, only Mohamedou Diara is still on the injury list with the, the knee problem. Are we likely to see any changes at the Stadium of Light? Are you thinking tactically about making any kind of changes from, from what we saw, for example, at Norwich, what we saw then at Craven Cottage against Stoke? Of course, against Stoke, I knew that they were very well organised, so I thought... Uh, to bring Giorgio in again because Giorgio can play. Giorgio is a very good ball player, and uh, of course I thought we needed him. So that was the difference. Frimpong played against Norwich, and he did well with Sitwell. But of course they are different types. Uh, Emmanuel Son, he didn't have a, a lot of minutes yet. Uh, can play because he's a real ball player. So that is the decision. If we want to control the game in midfield, of course you can play with players like Frimpong or Eno. But sometimes I like to be a bit more adventurous and that is what we did last year, for example with Dembele and Ruiz and that is what I keep on doing this year. So we have to make a decision on uh, either Sitwell, although Sitwell, Sitwell and Frimpong or maybe Sitwell and Karagounis. So there's not a lot of difference but there, there maybe will be a difference in midfield. Just in terms of the players that, that you have at your disposal, a number of them out of contract, you've just been asked in the press conference if there's any news primarily on Breda, but there are a lot of players that you're looking to, to try and tie into longer deals. Yeah, of course it's not ideal, but on the other hand, if you look at the players we had on loan or on the freeze, you know, it was terrific. And uh, there's so many players uh, out of contract this year, but we try to manage the situation and we are talking, of course, positive was last week that Damien Duff extended his contract. We are talking to Breda and it looks positive. We're talking to Zenderos and that looks positive. Shosharit, of course, we've got time on our hand because it's an option. If we take the option, he's got to stay. If not, he can go back. Manalev, you saw Manalev against Norwich. That is a decision, but I will take that decision in a couple of months' time. But he looks a very good fullback as well. So on the left, if you see the options with John Onerisi, Ken Richardson, 
could be in the top five in England, you know, he's a terrific player. Emmanuel Wilson can play left back, so we've got quite a few options. Uh, the only thing is to, to get the balance right, and I think that is what, what we did over the last couple of weeks, and hopefully we can do that uh, over the next four weeks. But there is a few players we are talking to, and things look positive, so I don't think there will be a lot of players who will walk out on us, you know. <laughs> we wish you luck. Okay, thank you.